In the age of dragons and wizards, there was but one beast who not even the bravest of knights dared speak its name. It was called the massively parallel battery system. And it was said in the age of dragons and wizards, there was but one beast so fierce that not even the bravest of knights dared speak its name. It was the improperly monitored parallel battery system. And it was said that any battery who had dared enter its realm would be so gruesomely slaughtered that no one would even recognize its face when it came into the light of a workshop. For the first time in human history, this beast has been caught and it is resting here, beaten out and destroyed. However, we did not have time to save its last victims. 16 7 amp hour batteries that truly no longer have a face. Yes, yeah, so I just brought home this uh, Powerware 9110 3kV UPS, which uh, came with two external battery packs, and as you saw, it doesn't have any proper battery management whatsoever and it truly puts the swollen APC batteries to shame because this unit has for some reason entirely ruined all 16 of these batteries and it has not done so very safely at all these batteries have clearly suffered some form of failure and have been uh, continuously overcharged and the unit never understood that What's even worse is that uh, in the internal battery, eight of the same battery styles, uh, we have one battery for shorted cell. And in the other external pack, which isn't entirely ruined, we have three batteries with shorted cells. And the unit doesn't seem to be able to grasp that. It's just kept on charging and charging and charging. And what's worse, these units, battery packs, are just daisy chained with a simple breaker. And one battery pack comes in here, the other goes out there. So if you put two of these together and you're drawing less than 40 amps between them, they are just going to sit there and ruin each other. Uh, this one, it's just at 0 volts or 0 0.2 or something ridiculous like that. Clearly, at least one of the cells have gone entirely open circuit. And I'm happy for that, since if if these were, these were connected together when I got them, so they would, uh, if that wasn't the case, all of these batteries would have been entirely empty, as would all of these. So, yeah, they are from 2005, so I don't think they're any good anymore in any way, shape or form, but at least now I don't have to clean, clean exploded uh, VRLA guts out of this pack and the UPS. As for the UPS itself, well it has some weird issue where it will turn on sometimes but otherwise it won't. It's clearly run its hours. And yeah, now it's doing that thing. It's just kind of rubbing its fans a bit. It's single working fan. If you keep at it for a while it'll power on and give output even with its shorter cell. But, yeah. I was hoping that this would be a 48 volt unit that I could use in the solar system, but it's a 96 volt unit, so it's a bit worthless for me. But I'm going to give a shot at hacking it, perhaps. It certainly needs a big cleanup. But, yeah. I don't think I'm going to be having much use of this, probably try selling it real cheap to someone who might have use for it. It's a true online UPS, so it 
probably performs quite well if you get it working. Uh, it's probably just a bad cap or something because the insides of this unit just tell, tell the tale. It's been running for a long, long time. And it's even worn the bearings of its uh, rather expensive NMB fans straight down. So much that one of them don't even turn anymore. But I think it might be salvageable. But yeah, I'm going to have to do something about these. I, I've never before seen battery carnage like this. Every single one is catastrophically failed. And one of them had even literally sprayed electrolyte out of its out of its caps there. You that's nasty. Really, really nasty. I'm certainly going to be using gloves for removing these. But, yeah, this could have happened to my solar system. <laughs> Back when I was running it uh, in entirely unprotected parallel mode, except I didn't even have a breaker. <laughs> so, yeah, horrible stuff. I am surprised, though, that uh, the unit has not been able to catch on to the bad batteries, because we have a very obvious shorted cell here. There you go. As well as here, I believe, yeah, 10.4, and then I believe this one was bad, yeah, 10.7, and one of these in the lower row, possibly this one, yeah. So there are three shorted cells in this pack. So <laughs> it's a 92 volts pack rather than a 96 volts pack. That's that's something the unit should have been able to catch on to. If it had more proper battery management than just two fuses and a breaker in series with them. Jeez. I I can't believe they actually manufactured it like this. It's it's I mean this is very unsafe. Just imagine how much gas has ex been ex escaping probably at a rather fast pace considering how they're swollen up due to temperature. I mean, this could have been an explosion hazard if this unit was kept in an enclosed space. Very nasty. Anyway, I just wanted to make a quick video of this unit since I just brought it in the workshop. I've got other stuff to do and I might do a follow-up video on this sometime in the future. Perhaps if I can make something useful out of it and get it to start reliably. In case it's not just a matter of replacing the batteries. It's alive! I'm not certain if it was replacing the bad battery that did it or cleaning the fans out. It does seem if they actually turned around. But this unit seems to be running now. I'm reasonably certain it's got output. It had wanted it to actually start the last time, so there we go. Free money! As for the condition of these batteries though, under 7 amps load, 86 volts, and if we check the voltage of the worst one of a bunch, which I believe to be this one, we have 8.8 .8 volts, so this one's got <laughs> at least one very weak cells, probably two. So, of course these batteries are short, but hey, at least they work. Let's overload them. That was a whole kilowatt. Ha! Alright, so I replaced the fence in it. I had some suitable NMB ones lying around, same series as these, except with quite a few less hours on them. This one's certainly seen better days. So, let's turn it on. Brace yourself, these are quite powerful. And now it's running. <laughs> and they are indeed turning. It's basically making about as much sound as a typical home PC now. Certainly don't mind that. 
this one's actually the temperature controlled version of these but we are rather uh, generous in their speed curve so they should be sufficient they are also a bit more powerful full speed than the original ones and especially considering the bad bearings this might be a quite nice unit actually and as if this battery failure wasn't scary enough already these batteries are not glued together these are the ones from the other pack and if we separate a couple of these using considerable force considerable force we find that not only has the plastic case deformed but it has gotten so hot as to actually melt and to leave a mirrored imprint of a label of the battery next to it and there is literally a hole in that battery right there where the plastic has fused with the one next to it like so <laughs> made in China like a happy face well I don't think it's possible for small small valve regulated lead acid batteries to fail in a more scary manner than this I mean come on just look at this Just for fun, let's try and break our way inside of one of these and have a look at whatever remains of the contents. And here we have what, <laughs> what little remains of our lead. We do seem to have a fair amount of connecting rod bus bar things left. I think this might be some kind of. Perhaps this is some piece of absorbent glass mat, glass mat that has come loose. But mostly it's just. Lewis grime and dirt. The plates, well, I don't think they are plates anymore. One thing's for certain, there's no electrolyte left. Actually, yeah. This is actually somewhat moist. Somewhat. At least it's soft. No, it's moist. Oh, same base. A very small amount of electrolyte left. It's probably <laughs> mostly just sulfuric acid by this point. There can't be a whole lot of water in there, that's for sure. I mean, this center cell here. You can just see the gaps down between the plates. There's just nothing left. So let's try and pull a plate out. That's what's left of our negative plate. <laughs> just a 
cracked mess. Wow. What a horror show, and I'm presuming that's where the positive plate is supposed to go, but we just have a bit of brown mush left. There we go. A few entire cells. <laughs> uh, this just demonstrates it perfectly. We've got a negative plate. Nothing. Nothing. Well, well there, there's a negative. Yeah, there's a negative plate wedged in between these separators. In there. So we've got negative plate. Nothing. Negative plate. Nothing. <laughs> The positive plates are gone. We're falling out on the floor. <laughs> I might be able to get it on camera, but you can kind of see the structure of the positive plate deep in there. But it's just so fragile that it's falling apart. Oh, we're getting little positive plate flakes. There you go. There's our positive plates. They're neat, neatly divided into little squares that are just turning into nothing. Always part of a healthy breakfast. <laughs> wow. Anyway, if there's any remnant of sulfuric acid left in this, this should show it. This is baking soda mixed with water. This might sizzle considerably. <laughs> Okay, there seems to be, there is no electrolyte whatsoever in this. I mean, there isn't even, if there were any sulfuric acid of any kind, even if it reacted with a plate, this would sizzle, it would make some kind of reaction, but no wonder the entire pack was uh, sitting at 0 0.2 volts, there, there's nothing in here to make a battery. I mean, there's no lead and there's no acid. It's just powder and fiberglass separators, so that's it. <laughs> well, and negative plates. We have some nice contained negative plates. <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, I better wrap this up now.